Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to change the water filter inlet tube on your refrigerator, and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a 5 16 and quarter inch nut driver, a putty knife, a half inch wrench, and a quarter inch socket and a small ratchet. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair we will need access to the back of the refrigerator and the front of the refrigerator. So we're going to have to pull it away from the wall. We'll also have to disconnect the inlet water supply to the back of the refrigerator before we can begin our repair. Now that we have access to the back of the refrigerator, we've removed the inlet water supply with that half inch coupling nut. We're next going to take the rear panel off and I suggest that you take the whole um, back panel off rather than just one end of it and fold it away. So we don't want to damage that. It is an important part of how the refrigerator works. So we we'll remove the quarter inch hex head screws. You can just pull that panel away at the bottom and untuck it from the little groove across the top. We'll just set that aside. Now the inlet water valve is over in the right hand corner here and there will be two different styles of this. Some types have an external connection for your inlet water supply and others have the tubing that runs directly from the water filter. Now if you have the style that has the external connection, we're going to actually remove that from the valve because we will no longer need it. So we'll start by pulling the two screws that secure the water valve bracket to the side of the refrigerator cabinet. Now these are a machine type screw. They're a little bit different than the ones that hold the back panel on, so make sure we keep those separate. And then we can pull that valve out far enough we can access the water line at the very back of it and it will have a push-in type of connector. So we'll simply push in on that collet, hold it in and then pull the tubing out the back. Now there may be some water that comes out of that tubing so I have something there to collect that. And as I say if you have the type of valve that has a separate input to it we'll need to separate that from the valve at this point. Now also included in this kit is a sleeve that will fit over the harness connector to the condenser fan motor and depending on the style of motor that you have you may or may not need to use that sleeve. So identify the type of motor that you have and compare it with the instructions and if need be you just pull that connector off, slide the sleeve over it and then reconnect it. Now our last step at the back of the refrigerator will be to disconnect the clamp that holds that inlet water tube if your model is equipped with that style. So simply take that quarter inch hex head screw out, separate the clamp and just set that aside and that will allow us to pull the tubing out through from the front. So next we're going to go to the front of the refrigerator and access it through the kick plate. So next we're going to go to the front of the refrigerator and access the opposite end of that water line that we're replacing. So our next step will be to remove the kick plate at the bottom. So we'll start by opening one of the doors and with a putty knife, we'll just go down in behind that enough to pop your fingers in behind it. Do the same on the opposite side. And that kick plate has two arrowhead fasteners, one on either end. They clip into a little spring clip mount it to the side of the frame. Now our next step will be to remove the filter housing so that we can access where the water line connects to the back of it. So next we're going to remove a quarter inch hex head screw that is into the side frame of the cabinet and it holds that support wire that is connected to the filter housing. We will need to remove that and you'll probably need to use your quarter inch socket and ratchet to get that screw out. Now next we'll remove two five sixteenths hex head screws that are on the bottom of that filter housing and that secures it to the cross rail on the frame. Now 
Now we can pull that filter housing forward enough so we can access the water lines connected to the side of it. Now the one closest to the front is the inlet supply line that we're going to replace. And again, it has a collet. So we'll simply depress that and then pull the tubing out. And again, we'll probably get some water that will leak out here. And we're ready to install our new tubing. And you'll note that it is considerably longer, but we don't want to cut this tubing. We'll place the excess at the back of the refrigerator because there are fixed ends on both ends that we don't want to uh, alter. So unravel enough of it that we can push it out through the back. So take the end that has the metal nut on it and a protective cap is straighten enough of that out that we can push it straight through and out the back. Now we'll take the opposite end that goes from quarter inch tubing to a 5 16 tubing end and we'll insert that into the filter housing. We're just going to push that in until it bottoms out, and then pull back sharply on it, and it should stay connected. Now we'll put the whole assembly back into position. Just guide that tubing in, making sure that we don't kink it anywhere. We'll reinstall the two 5 16 screws on the front. We won't tighten those yet, we'll just put them in enough to hold the housing. Now next we'll take that support wire and our quarter inch screw and we'll attach that to the side. Now with that in place, we'll tighten the two screws, try to center them up in the opening. Now next we'll reinstall the kick plate and we'll need to make sure that we have that housing centered with the hole in the kick plate and also we'll want to make sure that the water line that goes up to the door is not binding up anywhere. Typically you can hook it underneath that mounting screw for the front wheel. Line up the arrowhead fasteners and snap it in place. And now we can go to the back of the refrigerator again. Now our next step will be to pull that inlet water line and connect it to the back of the refrigerator just to hold it in place. And then we'll be able to reconnect to our supply from the home using the same connector. Now our next step will be to connect the inlet water tubing to the back of the refrigerator and if your model had that type of setup in the beginning you'll reuse the clamp and if yours had the breakaway fitting on the valve we'll use the supplied clamp slip that over the tubing and just pinch it together and then using one of the quarter inch self tapping screws we'll mount that to the to the back and we'll leave enough slack in there so that we have no kinks anywhere between the back of the cabinet and where it connects to the water filter. So just check inside, make sure that there's lots of tubing there and then tighten that up. You'll now be able to connect this new tubing to your existing water supply using the nut that is supplied on the tubing. We need to reconnect the tubing from the outlet of the filter. So reach in until we can locate that. 
make sure we have the end of it clean. And then we're going to insert that into the back of the valve. Same type of a collet type of fitting where we just simply push it firmly all the way in and then pull back on it to make sure it's locked in place. And then we can reattach the valve to the side of the cabinet. And we'll use the machine type screws with the finer thread to attach that water valve bracket. Now before we put the back panel on, we we'll want to make sure that none of the tubing is touching any of the copper pipes that may overheat and cause a melting situation. Make sure our wire harnesses are still connected properly. Then we'll take that cardboard back panel and we'll just tuck the top of it into the little channel in the back cabinet. And we'll replace the screws. Now, if your model had the breakaway style valve on it, you can use the adhesive strip that was packed with this kit and cover over the opening where that would have been cut away for that connection. We we'll use the screw with the large washer on it in the middle. So now we're ready to push the refrigerator back into the opening reconnect our water supply and turn the supply on and check for any leaks, reconnect the power. So now that we have the refrigerator back in its position, our repair is complete. I told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.